Hmm? Do we need to go off camera? No, you can stay on camera if you like. Um, I think. <laughs> What baby? I think the um is he there? Who? Harry. Yes. I think the email address is Krishna and Dini Davy Dossi at Yahoo.com. It is. Okay. All right, y'all. I'm starting this. Okay. You can start letting you can start letting people in. No, I need to let the it didn't go live. Hold on. One second, y'all. One second. I may I need to make this go live on Facebook. Here, how do I go live? I'm not gonna lie. Wait, go down. Click Google. I'm here. What's going on? No, go down. Join live. Uh, no, it should say go live, right? Look at it. What? The video is live on Facebook. Oh, it is. Cool. Okay, you started Zoom. I'm about to. Okay. Yeah. All right, great. So, it's 10 p.m. We're about to do it. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and get this started. Uh, I'm going to let you run. All right. Sangha, the Hohea. 
Welcome. Um, as we wait for a few people to continue trickling in, I want to go ahead and get started. So, Okay, so uh, thank you all for joining us today uh, as we celebrate virtually the life of Mother Krishnanandini Devi Dasi. Uh, we hoped to be able to do this in person, but even so, we are uh, delighted that we can still share this auspicious uh, occasion today with all of you, including those of you who are joining through Facebook Live. On the one year anniversary of her physical departure, we gather to honor a soul whose steadfast compassion, selfless sacrifice, generosity of spirit and towering faith in the Lord has inspired so many all across the world. So to give a sense of what the program looks like this afternoon, uh, we will start with an invocation and prayer uh, and sharing from Mata's senior god sister and brothers um, Giri Raj Swami Malati Prabhu and Bhakti Dira Dharmadar Swami. Following, we will hear words from family. Uh, we will see another slide so to share some additional memories. Uh, we have a, a, po a poetry offering, and then we will allow the God family uh, and well-wishers an opportunity to share. As a reminder, uh, please keep your microphones muted unless you're speaking to minimize uh, distractions. And I ask that all speakers be conscious of the time. We want to be sure that everyone has had a chance to speak. So with that, um, Gary Raj Swami, we are so grateful that you uh, and Malati Prabhu and Bhakti Dharadama Swami are joining us. Uh, so I will turn the floor over to you. Hare Krishna, it is a great uh, honor and a pleasure and privilege to be with all of you on this uh, special occasion. Homa Jnana Timirandasya Gyananjana Salakaya Chaksur Militam Yena Tasmai Sri Kurave Namah. 
Nama Om Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale, Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Nityanamani. Namaste Saraswati Deve, Gauravani Pracharine, Hirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine. Vanchakalpa Truvyascha, Kripa Sindhu Bevacha, Patitanam Pavane Bhyo, Vaishnava Bhyo Namuna. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Adwaita Gadadhar, Sri Vasati Gaur Bhakta Vrinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. I first met Mother Krishna Nandini at the 40th anniversary of the installation of Sri Sri Radha Kalachanji in Dallas. On Sri Radhastami in September of 2012. She and her mother, Bhumata, were both initiated by Srila Prabhupada on Radhastami in 1972. At the anniversary, she shared wonderful memories of her meeting Srila Prabhupada in Dallas at the time of the installation of Shishi Radha Kalachanji. And she made a heartfelt appeal, quote, Srila Prabhupada has given us the key to happiness, which is what our soul is hankering for. If we at all appreciate that, it is our job to share that same love that Srila Prabhupada shared with everyone else without discrimination. Krishna loves every single living entity. There is no living entity that Krishna does not love. And the greatest service that we can do if we want to please Radha if we want to please Krishna, is to share this love with others and to make sacrifices like Srila Prabhupada did to do that. Here was Srila Prabhupada, 70 something years old, heart attack, dealing with crazy, weird people. But he did it because he loved Radha and Krishna. He did it because he felt he had an obligation to his guru. And this is our responsibility as well. So here I sit 40 years later, and I am telling you all, this has not been an easy path. I would not dare to tell you that it has been. This path has been fraught with difficulties and challenges and pains and tears, but I wouldn't trade a single ounce of it. After hearing her speak, I was eager to meet her. And so we sat together at a table in the Peacock Room of Kalachanji's restaurant, along with her husband, Tariq. I was fascinated and impressed by their relationship. He was a Muslim, favorable to Krishna consciousness, and she was a Hare Krishna devotee. How did it all work? He said that she was the one spending time with the children, so she should decide on their spiritual upbringing and she raised them all as devotees, servants of Srila Prabhupada and Sri Krishna. The two of them were marital counselors, and I thought that their example of mutual respect, harmony, and love with him as a Muslim and her as a Vaishnava meant that any husband and wife, however different their backgrounds, could live together peacefully and happily. And thereafter, on occasion, I would ask her to counsel devotees with marital problems. In one case, a wife who was a devotee and whose husband was an atheist. 
Srila Prabhupada had instructed her to show people all over the world how to have Krishna conscious marriages. And she dedicated her life to doing that. With a small group of devotees, she founded ISKCON's Rihas Division team, which is committed to strengthening and supporting, quote, healthy marriages, happy families, and a strong community. And she remained its president until the end of her life. On August 28th, 2018, she wrote me a kind letter, quote, today we just finished working with a couple on Skype. We work with couples from many places on Skype, providing premarital and marriage education. As part of the se session with this couple today, we read together out loud the foreword you wrote entitled, The Purpose of Grihasta Ashram for our Heart and Soul Connection book. Tarek Prabhu wanted us to write you an appreciation for the marvelous foreword you wrote. Quote, it perfectly encapsulates the purpose of the book. End quote. Although Tarek Prabhu and I have read the foreword several times, we were again touched by the sharing from your heart, the analogies and the references from Srila Prabhupada. It really helped the couple to understand more the purpose of actual Grihastha life. So thank you again. We are grateful for your support of our mission in strengthening marriages and fulfilling our motto, healthy marriages, happy families, strong as God. After reading her and her husband's kind appreciation, my heart melted and my eyes filled with tears. And she added a PS, quote, heart and soul connection, a devotional guide to marriage, service, and love, in addition to the English version, is now available in Russian, Italian, and Portuguese, which indicated how her service was being appreciated worldwide. Krishna Nandini Mataji had many children, and she took great care to encourage them in Krishna consciousness, even after they left home. One, Dhyansham, had come to Santa Barbara, and she phoned me to discuss how I could facilitate his bhakti. And the next day she wrote me, Quote, we were grateful to have the opportunity to speak with you and appreciate your willingness to reach out to our son. And she wrote that S-U-N, to reach out to our son, Ganeshaw. He is a doctor, veterinarian, who is specializing in cardiology and is working there as a resident at a veterinary clinic. Here are his contact details. May you always be peaceful, living under the protection of our sweet Lord Krishna. So Gansham had a loving mother who wanted him to be not only materially successful, but also Krishna conscious. Later in Dallas, her son, Shamsundar Dasart, got to know me, and eventually took shelter of me. He described his spiritual journey, which at some stage had taken a detour, and how his mother's upbringing of him, steeped in hearing Srila Prabhupada and the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, 
had eventually prevailed and brought him back. His mother very much wanted to be present for his initiation, and she was planning to come, but her health deteriorated and friends and well-wishers advised her to go to India for treatment as soon as possible. But she was very much present in spirit and to honor the name Shamsundar that she had given him on September 15th, I initiated him as Sham Vallabh Das. A month later, Krishna Nandini wrote me, thank you again for accepting Sham Vallabh as your disciple and connecting him more fully with our parampara. I pray often for your well-being and encouragement. You have undertaken a serious service on behalf of Srila Prabhupada <clears throat> and are assisting so many people to have a good understanding of our sambandha and how to prosecute devotional service and achieve the ultimate goal. So she's, you know, so humble, so grateful, and so philosophical. I mean, she didn't use all three terms, but basically here she's referring to Sambanda, Abhideya, and Prayojana. This is a scary yet exciting time in the Krishna consciousness movement. And I pray that you and I get to cooperate more and more in pushing forward a healthier, more loving, yet chaste approach to engaging in the Lord's service. Anyway, as you know, I am here in Vrindavan and Kartik is upon us. I'm so grateful that Srila Prabhupada and Srimati Radharani are allowing me to undergo this serious austerity in the Holy Dham and are giving me the determination to continue. She also sent me several copies of a small book she had written, The ABCs of Chanting the Holy Name of God, one for myself and the rest to share with others. She was an amazing, beautiful person. Mother Krishna Nandini, we love you and we miss you. A huge hole has been created in our society and in my heart by your departure. But we will try to serve and please you in separation by acting as you would wish and supporting the people and the causes dear to you. And when Srila Prabhupada and you are satisfied with my service here, I may join you again in what Srila Prabhupada called the ISKCON in the spiritual sky. With deepest admiration, appreciation, affection, respect, and love, your eternal servant, dear Atsma. Mother Krishna Nandini Ki Jai, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai, Korbhata Ki Jai. Thank you very much. Maharaj, thank you so much for that very detailed history of Mata's exchanges with you. Um, it's beautiful to hear um, and really gives us some insight uh, because, you know, sometimes, especially as her children, she didn't always share everything with us. So it's nice to hear some uh, different perspectives. So we, we really appreciate you um, sharing and we're very grateful. Um, if I could ask uh, Malati Prabhu to jump on for a few minutes. Mata, you're muted. You have to unmute yourself. Yeah. Okay, no. 
Can you hear? Okay. Yeah, I was feeling like Giriraj Maharaj has fully described and said everything that could and should be said. Just one second here. So from another angle, I'll begin by offering my unlimited, grateful, respectful obeisances to Her Grace, actually I want to say Her Holiness, Krishna Nandini Devi Dasi. Nama Om Vishnu Paraya, Krishna Prasaya Bhutale Sri Mate, Krishna Nandini Devi Dasi Yati Namane. We have examples in our scriptures are known as Shastra of great ladies. Um, not everybody will recognize these names, but Draupadi Kunti, Subhadra, Jasoda, Gandharvika, would to speak of Sachimata. Srila Prabhupada introduced cultured, powerful ladies, devotees, Vaishnavis, filled with devotional knowledge and perfectly capable and able to teach bhakti as they have imbibed it through the mercy and instructions of Srila Prabhupada. Krishna Nandini was a guru, a spiritual master in her own right. She didn't need or require sanctification from anyone, yet she carefully acted according to the ISKCON protocol, which means spiritual red tape. One of my regrets is that I could not reverse the situation and tell her, just go ahead and do it. I'm referring to the effort that was being made that would enable her to officially act as guru for those wonderful souls she had carefully guided and nurtured, her spiritual children that were dependent on her mercy. And she had so carefully cultivated them. Um, somehow it wasn't meant to be at this moment in time, but it doesn't mean that she was not there and is not their guru. Krishnanini was a radically wonderful person. She was living and teaching the mood that was presented by the most radically wonderful person, Srila Prabhupada himself. In, um, I think it was March 7th of 14 in uh, Sridhar Mayapur uh, at the time of a general meeting of GBC members. And uh, earlier I had been asked to give a Bhagavatam class, which is a big deal in Mayapur, unfortunately. It shouldn't be a big deal that if you wear a sari, you will not be able to sit and speak the Bhagavatam class at that time, and it's getting better, but at that time definitely didn't happen, but it's a GBC meeting. So again, I was asked, and by what I mean again, I was like the token sorry. I was a token sorry on the GBC. And so I was a token sorry to give Bhagavatam classes. And I just felt, I don't wanna be that token. It shouldn't be a token, it shouldn't need a token. So I said, please ask Krishna Nandini. And I hadn't even spoke to her about this, whether she would or wouldn't, but um, they did ask her and she did accept. And it was a brilliant class because she is very shastrically knowledgeable and she has got a heart that has no borders. So, if anybody knows anything about our philosophy, which we don't dispute, it is our philosophy and you have to just look around, you can see it. This material world is a place of misery, a place of suffering. And um, people who give Bhagavatam class really like to drive that point home. So in the course of her class, she said, so now I'm going to switch gears just a little. Yesterday, my wonderful God brother, his grace, at that time he wasn't sannyasi, his grace, but Badri Narayan asked us all to suffer on behalf of Krishna. 
And that's such a commendable request because in the material world, we have to suffer anyway. After, but after all, Srila Prabhupada often said, chant and be happy. So I'm going to ask us, be happy. Be happy on behalf of Krishna. And I hope at the end of this class, you will see there's no difference between what Badri Narayan was saying and what I am saying. So, we've heard the story of the difficulties that your family encountered in becoming devotees. And actually, it's such a glorious story. It's such an extraordinary story. And I'm actually, it, I'm happy that it happened in, in the sense that it gave a light, it shined a light upon the personality of Krishnandini, of Bhumata, her mother, your grandmother, aunt, with all the family here, etc. cetera. Um, and people took notice. And there had been a particular devotee that had begun, even your family, kind of a tough time in Cleveland. Um, actually, when I came to know about that, I felt so bad that at a certain point, of course, it was much later, but I was in, in Ohio, Cleveland's in Ohio, and I didn't know about any of that. And not knowing about it, there was nothing I ever did or said um, to make any amends. And I always felt sorry for that. Um, but nonetheless, this one devotee was before my time in Ohio, gave a hard time to the family. And um, somehow or other, he had migrated down to North Carolina Temple. And your mother was there, came on a visit, I guess. And he, she came up to him and she said, Prabhu, do you remember me? And after some time, he said, yes, I do. If I could, please tell your mother and your brothers to please forgive me for everything I did to you. And if I could, I'd take it back. And Krishna Dandini gloriously replied, Prabhu, I wouldn't let you take it back because of what you did to us, because of all the trouble and tribulation you caused us, we left Cleveland and ended up in Dallas, Texas, getting initiated on Radhastavi by Srila Prabhupada. In the same day, he installed Radha Kalachanji. So I wouldn't let you take it back for anything. <laughs> um, I know there's many other people. There's so many other wonderful stories. I will stop with this one because I think that's the essence of Krishna Nandini, her open-hearted generosity and her relentless way of dealing so lovingly and personally with every person she met. And sometimes I used to think about her family members, some of who I knew and others that I didn't, but I'd heard their names, of course. And I used to wonder, I wonder what they all think about all this, because there's the mother, and then there's the public figure, and then you know, all these di di dynamics. And um, after her departure, I actually heard from a few family members here and there, some little snippets, and it actually really allowed me to more deeply appreciate your mother. And I'm gonna give a little push here to a book that was written by one of her children that I got a hold of after hearing about it. And um, I think Gunga's laughing. Black Boy Out of Time by Hari Ziad. Great read, please read it. You're going to find out even more about the wonderful person Krishnandini is and the wonderful persons who make up your wonderful family. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, and thank you very much, Ganga, for keeping this forward. Now, pause. One more thing. Um, the Vaishnavi Ministry is promoting an effort to get a film produced about Krishnandini. And I think this is an extremely important project. 
now you might say, why is why doesn't the ministry fund it? Well, because the ministry doesn't have funds. Therefore, I suggest, I, I was approached actually by Gunga about this project. And I was thinking how to do it, what to do it. I mean, just how to move it out there. So I felt like putting it on the table of the ministry, we could get, get it out there. So that's happened, but we need more people. This isn't a project for women, about women, by women. This is about an extraordinary soul, a Vaishnavi, a devotee of the Lord, a servant of Srila Prabhupada. And her story can give hope to a broad, broad generation of people, past, present, and future. So please take a look at the ministry. There's a link there on the ministry about the film. And I'm just shamelessly asking you, please contribute as much. It's not even, we're not even asking this much. The filmmakers have already proven their worth. Um, I don't know if you've seen the little film Joy of Devotion, but that's who the film, who's behind it. So kindly um, help make this film a reality. Hare Krishna. Mata, thank you so much. Um, I don't even have much to follow that. We, we just are so grateful for your support of our family, but also being such, a, such an advocate and champion for Mata as well. So we are eternally grateful to you, um, Malati Prabhu, and thank you so much for sharing. Um, I will ask now if Bhakti Dero Damodar Swami can unmute himself and share a few words as well. <clears throat> Oh, Vishnu Padia Krishna Krita, you would tell us Mati Bhakti Vidanta Swami to me. I would say Sarasati, you go to Ravani Pacharin, the Divi says as an Avadi Pasta Chad is a turn. Om Magyana to Miranda Sia again and then the Chola Kayat Chak Shulad Nimitan Dinata Swami Sri Gravidama. Jay Sri Krishna Chaitan, Pravinditan and the Sriya to it. Rather than a city of a side, they go over the book of Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare Hare. A grace, Krishna, and Dini, Devi, the Sikhia. We are very, very fortunate to have a, a personality like Krishna and Dini in our Vaishnava community. My first time of meeting her was when the, he came to Ghana, the West African festival. And I was very, very fortunate to listen to the first Bhagavatam class he gave in the, in the temple. I was amazed to hear the presentations were doing, if she was given, unfortunately, or so to say. The, the topic, I don't know if she selected it or, or it was, it was arranged by Providence that she was, she was given a verse which has to deal with the marriage issue. And she perfectly presented the philosophy and a deep understanding about Marriage life and Christian consciousness, Christian consciousness. It was very deep and beneficial. In fact, to be to be frank, <laughs> when she was speaking, I was I was I was very appreciative and feel ashamed that if, if I were to speak on that base, I wouldn't have given the real like she, realization she, she she gave and presented. So I, I could see her maturity in understanding our philosophy, not only understanding our philosophy, but with the experience, presenting our teaching, our philosophy, with practical experience, and in such a way that everyone is encouraged, not just a household, that every single devotee is encouraged by teachings. And that because of our, of our interest in Christian consciousness and the desire to help, help everyone. Uh, in, in, a, in a supplementary Vedas, it is mentioned that 
a, a, a woman can be addressed as a mother only when her children are devoted. And Christian and Dede Mateji perfectly stood this position that although she, 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 she is from the Baisnawai culture, the tradition, her husband is a Muslim, a different tradition, how she perfectly managed that without difficulty. We cannot say that there are no challenges. We can't say that there are no challenges. Even, even people who have the same who have the same tradition, the same religious organization they follow. They have difficulties. What can be said of a marriage that the religion are different? She said, the devotee and the husband is a Muslim. So we cannot say that they are not challenged. But the beauty of everything is her ability to handle everything in, in such a perfect way that it's a big lesson, a big challenge for everyone. So we, we deeply appreciated her, her wonderful Krishna conscious life, that she, she can, she, she live her life in such a way that everyone is pleased. Even our previous acharyas are very pleased. I remember she said back to North Dakota, you mentioned in very encouraging way. And if, if anyone, anyone could follow this, no religious organization will have any difficulty or no person will have any difficulty with anyone practicing any, any form of religion. Sri Bhakti Nautakura said, why are we disturbed that someone else is worshiping our Krishna in a different way? I think that Krishna and Nimataji perfectly, perfectly demonstrated this quality that uh, she is very, very mature and experienced, that she can deal with everyone, even, even if their religious faith is different from us. She can perfectly relate with anyone, with everyone. That we have seen in, in her life. So we have also seen how our, our devotees having, having one, two children, they have difficulty in making them devotees. Krishna and Dini has so many children and she met all of them devotees. This is very, very, very rare. Very rare. I've seen devotees who have tried so much to make their, to make their children devotees, but they failed. So it is, it is, something to be glorified, to be deeply appreciated, that she is an outstanding personality that made her children Krishna conscious. With, with, a, with a lot of difficulties and challenges, she's able to do this perfectly. It is something to be highly appreciated, something to be remembered. There's something to, to for us to sincerely glorify her for wonderful devotional qualities she has, that she has, she can perfectly, perfectly deal with every situation in Krishna consciousness in such a way that everyone benefits. I remember when, when she disappeared, many devotees were very, very, very sorry for this the suppression she has caused. And particularly, I remember his great Kalakanta Prabhu. He seriously lamented, oh, Krishna Nandini, Mutaji, uh, she is one of the devotees that will have been the first Vaishnava Buddha in this world. But uh, our bureaucratic and immaturity has made her to live with her fulfilling, fulfilling this, this uh, service or this desire, like uh, Malachi Prabhu just mentioned. She, she, she has the quality of being a spiritual mentor, which she has demonstrated throughout her life. And when she, when she spoke, 
when she spoke in Mayapur, it was amazing. And people who did not, in fact, let me say that she, she became fully recognized because of her presentation of Christian consciousness, how she was able to handle everything in the perfect and, and the pure, pure Christian conscious way. And everybody was really amazed and surprised and highly mm, appreciative of her Christian conscious understanding, her personal life. And, and she created a lot of faith in the heart of many devotees. So we are really indebted to, to what she has given to us and we will never forget it for life. We thank you seriously for, for giving the opportunity to know you and to have little association with you and being encouraged in our Christian consciousness by your personal life. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Maharaj, thank you so much for your beautiful sharing. Um, and thank you again to Giriraj Swami, Malati Prabhu, uh, as well as you, Bhaktijar Damodar Swami, for uh, being here and sharing your wonderful memories. Um, we, we are grateful. Um, at this time, I would actually like to ask uh, Tim, uh, Timothy Dwight, to share um, a poem that he wrote about Mata. Um, I will let it speak for itself. Um, so Tim, if you could take over, please. Yes, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Um, hello, family, I miss you all. And hello, um, extended family by virtue of loving Mata. Um, yeah, so I wrote this poem I'm gonna share, just a quick thing about the poem. Um, I wrote this with the, um, the hope of, I'm sorry, I was feeling a little, hmm with the hope of turning back time a little bit for us who love Mata. Um, and it's a countdown starting at 13 in respect to the day that she transitioned from this plane to the next. It is called an undoing slash return for Mata. 13, Slowly, her bladder absorbs the stain on her bed sheets until the linen is as white as when they were first put on. 12, she uncoughs the phlegm from her mouth that now moistens her throat. 11, she reels back the prayer she offered Krishna until it is safely returned to the cavern in her chest. 10, the cancer depopulates her womb. Nine, she stands and her limp unties the stutter in her foot. Eight, her hair detethers from the chemo. Seven, the condolences unreceived from her children's phones. Six, the morphine retreats the stiffness from her body. Five, the hospital, hospital gown scurries back onto a hanger in the clinic's closet. Four, the walker deconstructs in her living room. Three, her blood from the vials push back into her veins. Two, the picture my partner keeps of her on his altar floats back onto the wall it once hung. One, the bright song she sung on the voicemail loses its sense of nostalgia. And she is 50 years old again with a house full of children. And she is 40, leading worship. And she is 30, dancing in the street. And she is 19, standing beside her mother, stepping into the temple for the first time, saying, Hare Krishna, my name is Krishna Nadini. 
I have come here to pray. Thank you, Lord. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Mm. Tim, you've been after having read that many times. <laughs> Still, uh, so beautiful. Uh, at this time, I would like to ask Pita Tarik to share a few words. Pita Tarik, are you on? I know he was having some trouble getting connected. Hurry, maybe you could check in with him again and I'll, I'll go ahead and go first and then uh, uh, we'll, we'll let him go afterward. Um, so at this time then, if while we're waiting for Pita Sarik to try to get connected, I'll go ahead and share some uh, reflections that I have. Um, it's a little hard to follow Tim. So I was planning to go before you just for this reason, but I've been trying to make it through. <laughs> um, so last year to the day, uh, Mother Krishna Nandini shed her physical body on this earth. If we take seriously the promises the Lord has voiced across religious traditions, then we know she left here to be reunited the long line of spiritual revolutionaries for, for whom, from whom she drew her own inspiration. Mother Bhumata, Devi Dasi, Bhakti Tirtha Swami, and Srila Prabhupada. Last year, when we gave tribute to the powerful legacy Mata has built, I was moved to share what I know is Mata's primary objective, to remind everyone of what her mission is, to share Krishna with us. That is her real aim. Come chant with her. She invites us all, the glorious and blissful names of the Lord. I say is her mission because she may have left physically, but the profound influence of her integrity, compassion, and commitment to infusing even the briefest interactions with a touch of Krishna is no less present. I speak of Mata in the present because she is still speaking to us. And this year, she wants us to remember that it's just a matter of time. So if I could briefly share... of time when we are see Krishna it's just a matter of time when we all go back home but wouldn't you rather it be sooner than later wouldn't you rather be a lover more than a hater wouldn't you rather be a believer more than a deceiver would you rather serve Krishna now right now wish me rather serve would you rather serve love I'm Krishna Chintamani David so it's been a year, uh, but for me, it feels that only a short time has passed. This, is, this issue of time has been a recurring theme throughout the year, feeling at times as if the days were only inching along while other times feeling as if in a blink another month had slid by. I couldn't decide which I preferred. The more time passed, the further I felt I was being pulled from the moments we shared when she was still physically here. The grief was periodically overwhelming until I was blessed to recognize that even as I was being pulled away from the moments I shared in her physical presence, I was pu being pulled closer to her spiritual presence. With that realization came a profound sense of gratitude because all of a sudden I could hear her, I could see her, I could feel her everywhere. Dancing beside me in Kirtan, speaking to me through my daughter, her namesake, Ajanandini, visiting me in my dreams. In all these different ways, she consistently reminds me to keep focused on what matters most. And lately, it's been about time. So it's no surprise to me that when I sat down to make the flyer for this memorial, the lyrics to that particular one of her songs immediately came to mind. Mata is reminding us that it's just a matter of time before we all see Krishna, before we all go back home. She asked, wouldn't you rather it be sooner than later? The beauty of this simple question is how incredibly profound it is. If we truly believe as our own faiths tell us that we will all, all ultimately be reunited with the Lord in a place of eternal peace and prosperity where we do not have to endure pandemics and the agony of watching loved ones wither away before us, 
where we do not have to implore neighbors to care for one another or watch helplessly as the next climate disaster ruins homes and lives. If it is within our power to leave all of this behind, then what are we waiting for? Mata dedicated her life to ensuring that as many people as possible knew they had a way out of this material existence. She wanted all of us to know that all we have to do is live principled lives to love one another, a, a truly love, a love that forces us to turn inward and constantly examine our own areas for growth, a love that confronts abuse and mistreatment, a love that extends grace to those by whom we feel slighted, a love that transcends the boundaries of our egos and pride and unequivocally reveals that service to the Lord is in serving our families, our children, our partners, sisters and brothers, our friends, neighbors, and coworkers. What are we waiting for? Uh, what are our personal barriers to serving the Lord now rather than later? We are all here because we admire the towering human being that Mata is, but she was just that, a human being. And the spirit that shines so brightly from within her is no less present in each of us. So what is stopping us from living such exemplary lives? Is it fear, trauma, or pride? Is it a lack of faith? Or have we been lured into believing that material success and enjoyment is the end all be all? What is our hesitation at fully committing ourselves to the service of the Lord? The question Mata poses in her song is echoed by a very saintly person in the Vaishnav tradition, Bhaktivinoda Thakur, who writes, wake up sleeping souls, wake up sleeping souls. How long will you sleep on the lap of the witch called Maya? Like Mata, Bhaktivinoda Thakur implores us to recognize that every moment we do not use to bring ourselves closer to God is a moment wasted in needless suffering. Today, I express my gratitude for being blessed with such a mother and honor her sacrifice and legacy by acknowledging that the time is now. The time is now for me to act in spite of my fears, to let go of my attachment to some idea of what I am owed or have a right to. The time is now to recognize that there is no happiness, peace, or prosperity outside of my relationship with the Lord, and that that relationship is reflected in my willingness and ability to open my heart to others. So I'll end by providing a quick testament to the strength of Mata's love for us. So our family recently became host to an au pair from Brazil. And just a few days after she arrived, Marjorie, who is not a native English speaker, walked into the kitchen one evening humming a song. Um, and I immediately recognized it as a Stevie Wonder song. And Marjorie and I started singing together. I just called to say I love you. I just called to say how much I care. Mata absolutely loves this song. Whenever the family were gathered and any one of us was away, Mata would always make us get together and call the person who was missing and sing that song to them. The next morning, Marjorie told me, I don't know why I suddenly started thinking of that song. I haven't heard it in a very long time. It's no coincidence, she said with certainty. I believe that was from your mom. So Mata just called to say she loves us and that she's there sitting on the banks of Radakun, waiting for all of us to recognize that it's just a matter of time before we will all be together again. Thank you. So while I sit here and cry, I'm gonna ask any of my siblings or nieces and nephews if they would like to share. Daddy's back on there. Oh, Pizza Tarek's on, okay. Pizza Tarek, take it away. <laughs> You're on mute. You have to unmute yourself. Thank you. Uh, so far, the uh, high technology is way ahead of me. <laughs> uh, I was just saying, I, 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 I love that song too. And I, 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 it's been often sang in the family and, and elsewhere. Uh, it's a really, very good song. Um, uh, what do you want me to do now? Say a few words? Yes, please. <laughs> Uh, well, one of the things, uh, I'm going to say Hare Krishna again, and as alaikum, the peace be upon you. 
Uh, one of the things I've been thinking about uh, Mother Chris Nandini and uh, Dasi Ziad Family Institute has been coming up a lot. <clears throat> and um, Graha's division team and so many of the things that um, we have done with others to uh, help make this world a better world. Um, I want to be open to where um, I can be called upon to share uh, just specifically what were some of those things, how did, how did they appear to impact others, and what the possibilities are for us to take our God consciousness and put it into action into the communities. Um, Chris and I, Dini, uh, uh, in my early days of, uh, of um, uh, being around her, and it's very interesting how we met. Um, uh, I would like to have uh, time one day to tell that story and to tell the continuation of that story. Uh, to get to the point of where we these, we we um, uh, actually when you have the um, Grahas Division, not the Grahas Division team, Cleveland Amahata program uh, that Kristen and Dini was uh, leading, and the Lord Have Mercy Festival, and then the uh, Grahas Division team where it met in our home for the first opening meetings that Bhakti Tirti Swami uh, formed us all together. And on and on and on to the things we did in different schools, the contracts we got with different schools to take children who had um, uh, been given up on and turned them around. These are some of the things that um, I think many others can do. Hare Krishnas, Muslims, uh, Jewish, uh, concerned citizens in the um, community. Uh, so as much as I can help to give the clues and the steps of how we got involved with these things, that I would like to do. I would like to be on 24-7 call for anyone to call me or to set up to where I can be questioned about what I have as the experience of being with Chris Nandini and others in the Hare Krishna community and in the community at large to what we were doing to affect change. So uh, I appreciate that the good Lord had me meet Chris Nandini when she was nine years old uh, through uh, just me happen to be at the right place at the right time where our minister uh, asked me to go with him while he delivered a care package. And she was sitting on Mother Bamamata's knee and uh, very quietly, I don't remember her saying not one word, <laughs> but she may have, but I don't remember it. And the next time I saw her was many years later when my um, father's mentee said, wait, right here, I want you to meet my wife. And then it went on for um, um, by me knowing her and my father knowing her and Mother Bamanta. Uh, we just start seeing each other more and in being invited to programs. And time went on, and Bhakti Tirti Swami uh, assisted us in solving uh, some of the things we needed to each solve to get married. So I'll stop at that part, but I'd really, really want to share with people some of the things we've done in the community, how we did it, how we came about to do it, and that these uh, opportunities are available to anyone who wants to uh, work in the community. And I'm gonna turn my clock off here. <laughs> so I appreciate everybody in my life has helped me grow. I'm still here, 81 years old. For the most part, I have a smile on my face. <laughs> and uh, uh, I appreciate um, having had a full life that's been so blessed with so many good people especially the Hare Krishna community that I've met. Assalamu alaikum. Hare Krishna. Alaikum uh, aslam. Thank you, Pita Tarek. Um, so before I go on to have um, my brothers and sisters uh, or my nieces and nephews to share, I think 
Now would be a good time to uh, share some of what Malati Prabhu previewed for you all. Um, but I am so excited to introduce uh, to you all, in case you haven't heard, to a wonderful documentary um, that's in the works. And the film's purpose is to pay tribute to Mother Krishna Nandini by presenting her inspiring life. Oh, excuse me. Um, and the impact she made on her family, her spiritual community, and society at large. So I would like to actually share the trailer here with you all. just a bit of a preview of, of the documentary. Um, Mata impacted so many lives uh, and we wanna make it possible for her to be able to continue to do so. Please consider donating and sharing and so that we can ensure that, the, that her impact and the message of love for the Lord and his devotees that she dedicated her, her, her whole life to spreading can, can continue to be felt. Um, just think how pleased Srila Prabhupada will be um, knowing that this Krishna conscious movement is reverberating through generations. So uh, this project is being directed. Uh, well, sorry. By uh, Krishna Leela Devidasi, who has already produced a number of exceptional films, including a recent one about Bhakti Churu Swami and your donations and sharing will help us to preserve Mata's life and legacy um, with a documentary that, pre uh, excuse me, depicts her journey and impact based on interviews with herself with additionally recorded events and family gatherings, as well as interviews with family members and people who were impacted by her life. It will be subtitled in many different languages worldwide um, and streaming, uh, distributed worldwide through streaming services, ISKCON organizations, and educational institutions. So I would actually like to pull up here. The fundraising page, um, and if someone could kindly put the link to the fundraiser in the chat. And give everyone a few minutes to Go ahead and go tonight uh, we are just over the six thousand dollar mark um, and i'm confident that tonight we can make it to ten thousand um, every donation counts even one dollar but think if just a hundred of us who are here uh, tonight donated 40 or 50 dollars we could hit that mark and beyond and what's really cool is that for tonight only mata's children will match 
all donations up to a thousand dollars so please 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 donate generously and continue to do so as well as share the news and link as widely as possible Okay, so while we give everyone a, a few more minutes to generously continue to donate from their hearts, um, I have a little activity that I want to ask everyone to participate in um, just for a couple minutes. So, let's see. So, um, I want to ask everyone to just uh, take a a couple minutes to think about um, this this issue of time. And uh, one of Mato's primary philosophies was transforming spiritual knowledge into practical uh, action. And part of what made her such a powerful, influential person was because she lived her principle uh, principles and encouraged us all to do so. So I asked that everyone just right here in the Zoom chat or on the Facebook live chat. Um, to fill in this blank here with one characteristic or value that you can commit to working on in yourself over the next year to honor the love and sacrifice that you are here to celebrate. So go ahead, um, just put in the chat anything that you can commit to doing over this next year to honor Mata's uh, uh, sacrifice and legacy.
So I hear some beautiful, I see some beautiful things coming in to now is the time for me to write for Krishna, to be more gracious, to stay connected, for me to create Krishna conscious art regularly, to distribute the interview that we did with her, continue pushing on the GBT, to speak about Krishna more often, to go deeper into Japa, taking the time to nurture the well-being of those around me through caring and listening, to go deeper into bhakti, to practice silence and deep listening, develop more attachment to Vrindavan. This is beautiful, you all. To be more spiritual, wonderful. To practice compassion, to be more joyful, to be more enthusiastic and patient, to be more open-hearted. Oh. To be more patient and tolerant, to be more compassionate and loving. <laughs> to want to get better together. <laughs> Thank you, Ari <laughs> Yes. To consistently question my actions with, is what I'm doing worshiping the Lord? It's what Mata would always tell us. Yes, beautiful. Well, I could go on with this for uh, for the rest of the time that we have together. I do want to make sure that uh, everyone has an opportunity to share. Oh, man, my computer's frozen, so we don't know if that's going to happen. I guess the Lord wants us to stay in here a little longer. My computer's frozen, so. Okay. Okay. Perfect. So at this time, um, I am going to extend so a heartfelt thanks to all of you who have started the donations and keeping them coming. We are over $10,000 and you all are amazing. Uh, the love is felt so deeply and I we are so looking forward to getting this documentary produced. Uh, uh, devotees and family and friends and well-wishers, I cannot tell you how much that means to us. So now I will um, ask um, my sisters and brothers uh, to take a few minutes um, to share. And then we will actually have, um, we will end the program with Mata's God brothers and God sisters and open the floor, even to those of you who are watching from Facebook Live. If you would like to speak, please message the live chat and we will get you the Zoom code and password. Um, the Zoom link and password and let you into the Zoom session. Um, so please message the chat if you would like to speak. Um, and now I'll actually ask my wonderful, beautiful oldest sister, Radharani, to come share. Okay. Okay. Hare yeah. right, Krishna. Uh, when I was a young child, I happened to be at someone's house. Uh, it may have been Mother Kamagiri or Auntie Mani or many of the other mothers we were blessed with through our association with Mata. Uh, but this home had a sugary cereal and I was maybe seven or eight and I had never had those before because those of you who knew Mata knew that that was not a thing we did at our house. Um, and so I was hooked at the first bite and I begged Mata to buy more of this sugary cereal. And she explained the sugar content and the detrimental impact that sugar has on the body and why she wouldn't add that to her grocery list. I informed her with all of my knowledge that when I was, when I had children, I would allow them to eat whatever they wanted and I was gonna be a better mother. Y'all, <laughs> as if that was possible. Krishna Dini Devi Dasi was the quintessential mother, advisor and consistent model of seeing the good in every part of life. Her children often joke that she would see someone everyone thought of as the worst possible person and she would come away with something positive to say about them. 
And make no mistake, her life was not easy. From traumatic childhood experiences that some of us can only imagine, to raising children as a single mother with few financial resources, caring for family members with mental and other illnesses and experiencing the impacts of systemic racism that continues to permeate America. And yet, her unique understanding of the impermanence of the world and her belief in Krishna gave her the resilience to survive situations that have broken others. I've been fortunate to know her for nearly half a century, even though I'm only 30, don't do the math. And I had to search my memories to remember seeing her face without her radiant smile. Krishna Nandini always looked for the good. She taught us to consider the reasons people are what they are rather than judging them for their current circumstances. She taught us to understand that the goal of life is to increase consciousness. And she taught us, as my brother Tim said so well, a reverence for life regardless of its form. Real kindness can shift someone's life for the good. And doubtless, many of us are gathered here today because Krishna Nandini's rays of kindness blessed our lives. So I encourage us to reject the momentum that drives us to be critical and negative. And remember that even when times seem the darkest to look towards the good, be the kindness in someone's life they might not even know they need. It is always possible. Thank you to Bhakti, Krishna Kumari, Shaima, Mohan, Ganga, Ganesham, Hari, Krishna Jeevani, Vishnu, and you all notice I have to say them in order so I remember everybody <laughs> <laughs> for organizing this event. And thank you all for being here with us on this anniversary of Matsu's leaving her physical body. Oh, and yes, my children complain about the lack of sugary cereals <laughs> in our house. And the circle of life continues. Hare Krishna Mata. Thank you. <laughs> uh, thank you again, Radharani. That was so beautiful. Um, I love it, injecting the humor, um, those sweet memories. Um, are there any other of my dear siblings? I know. Uh, David, Tarek, you said you want to speak briefly. I just want to make sure that I get everyone on the list so we have time. Okay, we'll get everyone here first and then we'll switch. This is going to be a hard stop at 5.30, y'all. Just, just keep that in mind. Uh, Tarek Krishna, everyone, how are we both? <clears throat> and uh, thank you all for joining us in the celebration of Mother Krishna Nandini. Um, <clears throat> I wrote a poem uh, a few days before Mata passed last year, and uh, it's very much private, but I think uh, <clears throat> so many people were so close to Mata, and it really helped me with processing, because I felt like I hadn't maximized the the hadn't used all the time that we had and certainly didn't have enough time. So I wrote that in the spirit and it, uh, I think it helped and I think it helped me express to Masa while she was here, what I was feeling and that was big. So I wanna share it with you all as well. Uh, it's called Things Not Unsaid. <laughs> The sorrow of impending separation, the discontinuation of our journey together, these thoughts, this feeling of absence, things unsaid, actions not done. I love, apologize, you mean as much as a person possibly can. This peel of longing, this searching, scratching, gnawing, collapse, this rapidly approaching anticipated drop that void, be it things unsaid, or is it just natural progression? Necessary reaction to a vacuum. Because I would not end this conversation, not like this, likely not ever. We'd go all the places 
share all the experience and see all the world, write another chapter and another chapter and another chapter. There would never be enough written. There would never be enough said, but it is not things unsaid. It is the fulfillment of life's first promise, separation. It is change, it is grief, it is normal, it is necessary, it is not goodbye, it is see you later. And we'll see you later, Bossa. Thank you. Leave it to Mohan, leave it to Mohan. Um, at this time, I would like to ask, uh, as Mata would say, one of her favorite grandsons, S-U-N, Kaval, to speak. Give me like one second, let me get set up. All right. So you said hard stop at 5.30, right? Hard stop so at 5.30. All right, I'm gonna. And make we have this one quick. more speaker after you, so keep that in mind. All right, I'm gonna make this quick. I'm gonna share a quick excerpt from a song called "Solace" by Earl Sweatshirt, and then just speak on my something that's been stuck that's stuck with me for Mata for a while. I got my grandma's hands. I start to cry when I see him because they remind me of seeing her. These are times that I needed her most because I feel defeated, and I buy nothing by myself. My second thoughts, my my hectic process of thinking. I got my grandma's hands. I start to cry when I see them because they remind me of seeing her. These are times that I needed her most because I feel defeated and I buy nothing by myself. My second thoughts, my hectic process of thinking and all my doubts and I think. Time waits for no man and death waits with cold hands. I'm the youngest old man that you know. If your soul intact, let me know. So before Mata passed, she told me that she wanted, and she told me, and I quote, that she wanted her happy cave all back. Because this, this was when I was going through some pretty severe mental health issues. Um, and that, that's all that's stuck with me since that moment. And it all, it kind of sucks because, you know, I did eventually find happy cave all, but no, I can't, she's not around for me to show her that. So regardless, I still keep her memory very close to me and I try every day to continue to live and be happy and you know, keep hold on to that happy cave all just because that's what she would have wanted. And that's about it. Thanks, Caves. And she is here to see. She sees. Okay, um, David, Tarek, um, you're up next. And then following, we're going to jump right into Mother Agni Hotra. So I hope you're ready, Mother Agni. Um, oh, nope. Bhakti asked for a minute. So we will, after David Z, um, have Bhakti go. And then Mother Agni, you'll be up. Uh, thank you, Kaval. And David Z, I'm handing it over to you. All right, thank you. Hello to everyone. Uh, I'm David Z. I am one of the, uh, you know, uh, sons and siblings. Um, and the, as all of us know, the uh, far extending family of the Dasi family. <laughs> um, but I just wanted to share a couple of things in regards to where I was last year and hearing the news, what came out of that and what I still want to share with. Um, that was helpful for me in in this new process um, that I'll share, but then also uh, from, I, even kind of like as Mohan said, I, I, I feel it valuable to share because we never know where someone is in life and what they're dealing with. And so last year, um, I remember when I got the news of my uh, stepmother and there came a point to where I saw there was a change in me and the change was not, um, the greatest. I felt the change because I, I got mad at someone that walked past me and they did nothing to me. And so I recognized that as a red flag 
in regards to um, something needing to change so that doesn't grow. Um, and what I learned was in terms of what God showed me was when I finally, I remember I was washing dishes then, um, not soon after that, and I finally broke. And what I realized is that I said, I have to, I, I, I ran immediately upstairs into my prayer closet. And when I really gave it all to the Lord, I really gave it all to him. The Bible says to cast all your cares to the one that cares. And from that place of being honest and open and vulnerable about how I was feeling emotionally, because a lot of, I'll just say men, um, there's this culture that we do not, uh, we're not supposed to feel or we're not supposed to express or be vulnerable. It's in my most vulnerable place that God gets to come in and strengthen me to then begin to speak and to pray over and to cover certain things so that we are still standing strong. And so um, from that place, I just mention it to others. And I mention that because um, God is so great that he'll give you people to go before you so that when you step into that place, you'll know how to move and walk and still stand. And so I mention that because um, I lost my biological mother not long ago, and I don't know how I'm standing outside of knowing that I had to embrace it quickly. And it's from Gunga's word that also anchored me. And Gunga, I just wanted to publicly <laughs> say thank you to my sister. Um, you said something, and I have to paraphrase it, but um, the way that I received it when you said it, you know, we can, we can say something and we can interpret it and read between the lines. But, and I leave this to everyone else, whenever you are feeling in a place of grief, my, my, my pastor friend said this, grief is not a bad thing. It is the indication of someone's impact on your life. So if anyone is ever going through that moment as we can still continue to navigate through the waters of emotion or whatever it may be in that space, take with this, what Gunga said to me is it's been my anchor when currently dealing with, um, navigating my waters with my mother. She said, as we go into these places, and I'm paraphrasing, as we go into these new places, you get a chance to be new again. And I interpret that as we're gonna be in places where Thanksgiving is coming up for the first time where mom won't be here for me, be here for us. But I can decide that I can be a new person without what used to be. And so that Gunga um, is just evidence of the wisdom that you carry on. And we get to still see mom through you and every other sibling and every other person here. The wisdom, it runs deep. And I thank you for sharing that because when it's hard, I choose to become new again in a space that has never happened before, which is the absence physically of mom in a new place. Thank you. I'm David Z. I love you all. Thank you for sharing, David Z. Um, and, you know, I cannot take credit for that. I got that from Mata, who got it from her Mata, and she'll probably So the wisdom is being passed down um, and continues to, to touch those who need it most. Um, Bhakti, are you prepared to go now? Uh, yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, wow. Just going back in time a little bit. Um, when I was little, and it was me and Radharani initially in Mata. Um, just she prepared us with every tool that we needed: love, guidance, comfort, shelter. Um, she made everything seem very easy, and I know it wasn't because I was there. Um, she always made something out of nothing. Um, she. She made uh, us believe that everybody had good in them, which I still believe to this day. I'm starting to believe it a little bit more. And to like Radharani said, to always consider people's circumstances and don't be so judgmental and critical. I can say that before my time was pa passed, I was working on going through therapy and I, was, I got to a place where I wasn't so angry anymore. And then when she passed, I was angry all over again. And then I decided that I don't want to be that way anymore because I know that's not what she wanted for me and that's not what we talked about. And so I had to just keep 
talking to myself, talking to myself, talking to my siblings, talking to everybody, telling them, you know, like good stories about my so I wouldn't feel so terrible. So then I decided to start doing stuff that Mata and I had talked about, like getting the property, spending more time with my family, taking vacations, taking breaks. And I feel so much better. And I just miss her so much. But I know that she's with me every day when everything with me. I can feel it. I, sometimes I wake up in the morning and think she's cooking. Because that's always what she would do. And chanting and burning incense. But sometimes I'll be like, Mom, did you burn incense? He was like, no, I was asleep. So that's, that's my answer. So I just want to say that I love her and I miss her. And I'm sure she's here looking over all of us. And I appreciate all my family and my siblings. And I really appreciate you guys calling me before she passed. That means everything to me because I wasn't there as much as everybody else. I love you, my Tari Krishna. We love you too, Bhakti. I'm giving you an air hug. Air hug. Uh, Mother Agni Hotra. Hi, Krishna. I can't, I can't tell y'all to stop crying because now she got me crying. Listen, I know I don't have long, so I'm going to try not to keep it long, but just get to the point. Mother Krishna and Dini's even taught me a lot after she left the body. I love her dearly, and I think everybody knows that. <clears throat> Mother Krishna and Dini did what she promised Papa Pa that she's going to do. She planted the seed. And it, it, took, it took a while for me to understand what she was doing and understand that she was changing my life and put my life in the order that it should be in so I can go back home to God here. She was, she loved me. And, and I know that. See, Mother Christian Dini was not only my shiksha guru or things like that. She was my sister. She was my friend. And some people would not understand this, but her and I do. She was my daughter. <laughs> you know, everything. You know, because we happen to pass roles sometimes. You know, I got to teach her, she got to teach me. Some things I experienced and a whole lot of things she did. So when you got mother, when you got mother Krishna and Dini standing right there by your side, hey baby, you been here. When you got Mother Krishna and Nini right by your side, you got somebody. You got somebody. Somebody that's really in your corner. And I'm not, this is by Mother Krishna and Nini, but I still had to bring my baby in. My Ananda Maya and Nuni. Because Mother Chris Nandini brought me Nooney when he left his body. Right when y'all came, I know I told you then because y'all came right before the funeral. I looked up and looked out that window, and there where he was, just in a quick flash. But there he was. No, I did not see Mother Chris Nandini, but I felt her, and you could tell that he was with somebody that loved him and he loved. And so Mother Krishna Nandini was strong, is still strong. If she powerful enough to bring me somebody, she's strong. She's doing what she's supposed to do. So y'all look out. Don't think because Mother Krishna Nandini, you can't see her, that she can't see you because she can see you. So don't even try. So I'm, I'm going to let y'all go ahead on and some more people talk. Cause see, I'm going to talk again tomorrow. Because we having the program here in Cleveland tomorrow honoring Mother Krishna and Dean. So don't y'all ever think I don't love her because I do and I have not forgotten about her. And we keep changing roles in our life. So I love you all and I love Mother Krishna and Dean. And don't forget and everybody out there jealous of it and stuff, she sent for me. Okay, she sent for me. 
I moved in the house that she prayed that the next people come in that house be devotees of Krishna. And I was the next people that came in that house and here I am. Hare Krishna. All right, Krishna. Thank you, Mother Agni. We love you. <laughs> Um, if I could ask Mother Chintamani and Jagannath Pandit Das to share for a few minutes. Hare right, Krishna, everyone. Wow, my heart is just so bursting right now, you know, from all the love that you are sharing. Um, I don't want to take up a lot of time, but uh, Mother Krishnandini was family. I mean, she was so much to, to us, to my kids, to my wife. Um, I remember one time, uh, this was maybe 13 or 14 years ago. And our house was being built. So we were living in a, a little small place. And, you know, um, and they came for a festival, you know, Tariq and uh, Mother Krishnandini and several other kids came. <laughs> and so, <clears throat> so they needed a place to stay and we barely had any space. I mean, literally, you know, <laughs> Some were sleeping in the kitchen, on the kitchen floor. <laughs> you remember that, Ganga? And, and, and Ganga Shah and Ari. It was something. I mean, <clears throat> and it was just, it was a really special experience because it just, uh, you know, it just felt like family, you know, and always felt that with Mother Krishna Dini, how special she was. And, um, I was just telling my family uh, maybe two or three months ago that um, I, it seemed like it wasn't a dream, but it was a dream that the phone rang and I picked up the phone and it was Hare Krishna Jagannath. It was Mother Krishna Dini. I mean, you could just hear her voice, right? It was just like, <laughs> I was like, what? And then I said, I said, Hare Bo, Mother Krishna Dini. And then there was just silence. And I said, <laughs> oh, wow. I was like, for, I, I had all these emotions like, wow, I'm so happy to hear from you. And then at the same time, I was like, oh, such separation because, you know, she wasn't physically there. She, her voice wasn't there anymore. And I was like, wow, this is, this is something. But I really appreciated that she, she made her appearance there. And um, I immediately thought of Tariq Prabhu. So that next day I called him. <laughs> I don't know if I told him about that, but yeah, that's that was a recent experience. There's so much more I could say, but I'm just gonna stop there and let Chintamani share. Jai Hari Krishna. So I feel very honored to have the opportunity to be in the assembly of devotees and to speak about our most beloved, her grace, Mother Krishna Dini Devi Dasi. And as I thought, I've been thinking, okay, what small offering can I make? And the thought that came to mind is trying to present the legacy that she brought or that she carried, that she carries, and particularly the legacy and the imprint that she's left on me. And this song just showed up. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. You've been so been 
so good. I just want to thank you, Lord. And that's a song from my childhood in the church. And that song brought me to tears. And it brought me to tears for two reasons. The first reason is that I really present how much I miss Mother Krishnandini. And I think the depth of which I miss her stays in the background because if it was fully present, it would be rather difficult for me to function. So I was present to the fact of how much I miss Mother Krishnandini. And the second reason that song brought me to tears is because I was very present to how much she exemplifies that phrase, thank you, Lord. And she exemplifies it in terms of how much she loves the Supreme Lord, Lord Sri Krishna, and how much her life showed how she was fully convinced that Krishna is our ever well wisher and our dear most friend. And it also brought me to tears because it made me present how much she loves her spiritual teacher, his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. And whenever Mother Krishnandini would speak, she would speak something about Srila Prabhupada. So it came to mind, well, what does Srila Prabhupada have to say about gratitude? And I found a number of different quotes, and I'm going to make this quick. There was a class in Montreal on, Montreal on August 20th, 1968, on Srimad Bhagavatam 7 9, verses 12 to 3. And Srila Prabhupada says, the beasts, the birds, they cannot offer any gratitude, but I am human being. I have got developed consciousness. I must feel grateful for God's mercy and offer my gratitude. That is my duty. And in this same class, Shil Prabhupada was talking about how we've been giving, given so much. And he used the phrase, yet there is no thanksgiving. And he talked about how the Lord has given us so much yet there is no thanksgiving. So that phrase thanksgiving struck me because thanksgiving is coming up. And I said, Chintamani, this time of thanksgiving is here. Mother Krishnandini, the message she's giving you is thank you, Lord. So how can I take some practical steps to bring her legacy more alive in my life? And as Ganga said, Mother Krishnandini was about action. She was very sastric as we all know. She could speak the philosophy and live the philosophy, but she was about practical action. So I thought, what practical steps can I take? So for me, what came is keeping this mantra, thank you, Lord, in my mind and on my lips. Thank you, Lord. So as we know, it's easy to be grateful for the, quote, good times, yet it's much harder during challenging times. And Mother Krishna Nandini exemplified what Srila Prabhupada says in Nectar of Devotion, Chapter 42. When devotees are put into great difficulties, they feel all their miserable conditions to be great facilities for serving the Lord. Now, is that Mother Krishna Nandini or what? When devotees are put into great difficulties, they feel all their miserable conditions to be great facilities for serving the Lord. Srila Prabhupada said to Mother Krishnadini in a letter dated April 8th, 1975, this material body is a bad bargain because it is always miserable. So to make the best of this bad bargain means to render devotional service in any circumstance. Mother Krishnandini made this instruction her life's mission, render devotional service in any circumstance. So my practice, my prayer is to focus on this phrase, thank you, Lord, for sending this situation as a facility to serve you and love you more. And I may not even see it yet. I may not even feel it yet, but I want to thank the Lord in advance. You know how sometimes we send someone an email or we thank them and we say, thank you in advance. So my prayer is to thank you in advance. Lord, I don't even understand the mercy yet, but I thank you in advance. So, and he, and, and Krishna gave me an opportunity just before this program, some stressful things were happening. And I said in my mind, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So Mother Krishnandini gave me this gift. I'm offering you this gift. And I thank you, Lord Krishna, for allowing us to have the blessed association of Mother Krishnandini. 
and for her husband and children who are carrying on her mission. Mother Krishna Dini Devi Dasi Ki Jai Vaishnav Takur Ki Jai. Thank you so much, Jagannath Pandit and Mother Chintamani. Um, and I have to say, you know, I was hesitant to um, get started doing this yeah. memorial. And it, it was Mother Chintamani's encouragement that actually is the reason why we are all here right now. She, your support is why we were able to pull this off. So we are so grateful to you, Mata. Thank you so much. Um, if I can ask Partha Prabhu and uh, Mother Uttama to speak. Hare Krishna, uh, it's a great honor to be here. Can you hear us okay? Yes. And um, Krishnandini Devi Dasi possessed the highest level of love of God. And that was manifest in how she dealt with everyone around her. Um, she treated everyone with love and compassion, with the understanding that um, your spirituality manifests in how you deal with those around you. And she was actually given an instruction by Srila Prabhupada in a dream to help families in Srila Prabhupada's movement. And um, she had that intense desire to do that, to make families feel and experience that mood of love. And by the power of her desire, by Krishna's arrangement, um, somehow this Grahasta vision team came together. <laughs> and I think it's actually kind of miraculous the way that team came together, um, the most amazing individuals. And I consider um, the association of Krishna Nadini and Tariq and, and her team members in the Greenhouse Division team, one of the greatest blessings in my life. And it started in a very small way, but the mood imbibed by Krishna Nadini was that we just wanted devotees to understand what it means to, to love and give love. And um, from her, you know, seed that she planted, we could really see like the power of love, how it manifests and grows and spreads. And uh, we started something like 20 years ago in a very small way. And uh, we're seeing now the, the fruits of that effort manifesting in so many ways. Um, um, just like the Greenhouse Division team book, The Heart and Soul Connection, which was just recently published now in Chinese. And, this, and, and it's being translated into Spanish. The devotees read it and they just see this is such a valuable thing. We have to get this in our language. It's just such a powerful thing. And recently we were approached by Garanga, who's in charge of a major um, devotee care initiative. And he said, we consider the Gurhasta vision team the go-to authority on Grihasta life. And so all that was sparked just by Krishna Nandini's sincere desire to, to help others and, and get devotees to understand the meaning of love and compassion and kindness and respect. And whenever we travel over the world, I uh, very often talk about Krishna Dini and Tariq Prabhu and their amazing relationship. And um, in all our seminars, we always chant the We're in this together poem. And we love that so much. And um, go ahead. You want to say something? Um, Ganga, are you just about ready to play that clip? Yes. Do you want me to go um, ahead and play it now? This is an example of the kind of response we get to Krishnandini's poem. And when I tell people about Krishnandini and Tariq and their contribution to the, all the courses, and we were in Sao Paulo, Brazil, and I asked the devotees to say a little thank you to Krishnandini at the end of the course. And this is what they said. 
It didn't play that well, but they're they're shouting out "Muto Abrigado."